The next day, 11.30 a.m. Okay, Dusty, I agree this thing is... restrictive. I said into a headset Cascade had loaned me for the today's breakout. Yeah, I know. But your dad's gonna need that thing if things go south, Stardust said through the earpiece. I was in my father's power armor now. He the said he kept it home, normally. Last night, Stardust snuck over to the house and had taken it, without even setting off a single alarm or alerting the spies within the manor. Luckily, it was seized, and I was impressed, since I didn't think Stardust even knew the word stealth meant. I was afraid the armor wouldn't fit me, since my dad was nearly twice my size. Solstice showed me a little trick armor like my dad's had. It was self-adjusting. Solstice was amazed that I picked up on how to use it so quickly. She said it took weeks, so not months, to train how to lose, use power armor correctly. I hadn't told her that I had kept digging into Night Stalker's memories to help me. I still found that strange. When I needed to, I could normally pull up some random memory of my grandfather. It didn't always work, and most of the time the memory would fade after a few seconds, but it was useful. Also, anything I learned from it that had to do with a skill seemed to stick with me at a point. I was still a little unsteady in the Pegasus armor, seeing how the wings had to be locked into place since I didn't have wings, and they kept throwing off my equilibrium. The helmet was secured to the flanks of the suit, and I was wearing my normal barding and duster under it. If it wasn't for my pit buck, I would have had a hard time using it at all. Thanks to the interface system on my Mark II, I was still able to use the weapons if I needed to. Seeing how I'm a unicorn, I couldn't wear the helmet. Also, my disguise was gone, so I had to do something to help hide who I was. Unicorns don't normally wear power armor. Fairy Glitter put a captain's cap over my horn and mane. Okay, she tried three times. My horn was sharper than most, and it tore three hats before she got one more that had more durable fabric. It didn't help much to hide my identity, but anything that can somewhat hide my face and horn helped. I was now making my way towards the edge of the inner circle. High, where the larger buildings started in Stratus. The gallows were already set up, and ponies from all over the city were starting to form a large crowd. I grinned as I saw this because most ponies I passed didn't look excited to watch the execution. They looked ready to murder every single enclave soldier they saw. Murdering, uh, muttering mostly between them gave me hope that my message was received positively by the population. That helped a great deal because I made my way closer to where the execution would take place. I was all on my own. If everything went perfectly. I wouldn't even have to show myself until my father was released. It wouldn't happen in a million years of my luck, but if it did, it'd be totally sweet. How much longer until I bring my father out? I asked as I made my way through the crowd, doing my best to not be noticed by the dozens of Enclave soldiers who were watching the crowd. Half an hour, I think. Just try and keep an eye on everything going on. Cascade is ready on his end, and Solstice is getting set up right now. I'm in position. I've got eyes on you, Stardust said. I looked towards one of the four-story buildings across the street from the execution platform, but couldn't make out my friend, who I knew was steady with a sniper rifle. I can't even see you. Are you using a stealth buck? Nah, I have my own ways of fighting him when I need to. Move a few paces to your right and get closer. Keep yourself close to the building there. I did as he said, quietly saying, You're sure that rifle will be okay in a setting like this? And I wasn't sure myself at first, <laughs> but yeah. I may have killed Wrath and taken his rifle from him, but maybe I can put it to better use. Something like this isn't very practical for this setting, but you work with the tools you have, Stardust said sounding a little upset as he brought up Wrath. Phantom shot, I said. Huh? He replied. His name was Phantom shot. 
and I think he'd like to see his rifle being used to do something good for a change. He never wanted to be a sin in the first place. I said as I got into a position that gave me a good view of the stage and kept me out of sight. I read his file when I was pride. Didn't care much about his past when I was out of my mind. But now, he said, now I'm sorry I killed him. When this is all over, I'm going to find his daughter and apologize for taking him away from her. I blinked at that. Dusty, his daughter was killed by my uncle years ago. Yeah, his youngest daughter was. His other daughter, who's about your age, is still around. She wasn't home when Cal killed his family. She was at a friend's house. After Phantom Shot was arrested, she was put into a foster home and raised by them. She lived in Nimbus, from what I've heard, he said. Wait, you mean his daughter's still around? Does she know about her father? Also Cal? I asked. Cal is a new nickname I thought of for Rory Callus, because his name is long and I'm a little lazy. Kinda hoping it sticks. Anyway, I'm not sure. From the reports about Phantom Shot, he wasn't allowed to contact her. Since the Sins are essentially Dashites who work for a special force of the Enclave, they're ghosts to most Enclave citizens. She might have been told her father was executed or forced to leave the Enclave. Knowing Phantom Shot, he found a way to get in contact with her over the years. Stardust said. Do you know her name, I asked. Her name's Lightheart. She's a unicorn and attending the magic school in Nimbus he said. I looked back at the stage and took a deep breath before saying, Well, we'll find her when we can and tell her what happened to her father. Even if she hates us for it, she deserves to know the truth. Yeah, she does, he said, and his voice got firmer and he said, They're coming. Be ready. I looked up and sure enough, a black uh, transport pulled by a single Pegasus, was being flown down towards the stage. Followed close behind was none other than Winter Frost. He was in a set of pure white power armor with gold trim. His head was exposed and a grin like he owned the entire world was plastered on his smug face. My horn sparked with red magic for a moment as the anger had him filled me. Be ready, I said to Stardust. I'll let Solstice and Cascade know, too. Also, check the anger. I saw that flash of red from up here, Stardust said. I'll do my best. Let's just hope that everything works out the way we planned, I responded. Ah, that would be nice for a change. Being the underdog good guys sucks, he joked before he switched channels so he could update the others. I readied the weapons on Dad's power armor using my EFS systems to set up a targeting system in my sight. As soon as I did, a trigger bit came out of the armor, ready for me to aim and fire. Keeping to the shadows, I watched the transport as it landed with Winter Frost. The smarmy Flemwad slowly walked up to a microphone that had been ready for him at the edge of the stage. He looked out at the still-growing crowd and said, Welcome, citizens of the Grand Pegasus Enclave. I, as you know, am now the High Council Pony, Winter Frost. You're full of shit! Some pony yelled from deep in the crowd, making him pause for a moment. Another voice shouted, Eat a dick, poser! He took a moment to look for the one who spoke, but shrugged it off, continuing to say, I know the charges, the changes to Stratus have been hard for you all to take. But I promise you that a life in this great city will be getting better soon. With the help of our friends in Navarro, we've been doing everything we can to fix our last Council Pony broke. As he spoke, the doors of the transport were opened, and Thundercracker and my father were both escorted out. Greed had some kind of collar around his neck that emitted a blue glow. For a moment, I was wondering what it was for, but I realized it had to be blocking his ability to use his ultimate shield. Still, Thundercracker grinned as he was led toward the gallows, and he even winked at a young mare. At least he looked like he was okay, 
apart from the fact that he was about to be killed, he was led up to the noose. I realized for the first time I'd seen Thundercracker out of his combat armor. He looked exactly how I expected him to. A blue coat like his face, and the ivory mane and tail and goatee, which was new. Where his cutie mark should be, there was a branded lightning bolt and a cloud. The mark of a dashite. The scar was old, but it looked like it had to have been painful when it was done. Dad, on the other hoof, was so badly beaten it was hard to tell it was him. His face was swollen and full of cuts. Various other lacerations covered his neck, torso, and flanks. In the time that I'd spent with my father, even when I was a fool, I'd never seen his cutie mark. At least I couldn't remember seeing it. Now it was on display for all to see, and I could see why he was a descendant of Night Stalker. His cutie mark was a full moon, bright against his black coat with a single gray cloud crossing over the moon. He was also led to the noose to stand next to Thundercracker. It looked like Thundercracker said, First time? To my dad, but I could barely read his lips from my position. Both of these ponies are being executed today for being found guilty of high treason against the Grand Pegasus Enclave, Winterfrost said, sounding smug. Nightshade is a hero! He'd never betray us! Another pony yelled from the crowd. Yeah, what proof do you have he did anything to betray the Enclave? A stallion yelled. <laughs> Apart with working with his ex-wife to take over... Winifrost started to say. My father's voice echoed weakly to interrupt him. My wife? I never got divorced. Her name is Grimoire Spell, he said. Shut up, Nightshade, Winifrost said before looking back at the growing crowd. Apart from working with Grimoire, who took control of the sins... He's interrupted again by a stallion. Who are the sins? We were told they weren't real. Quiet, all of you. The next pony to interrupt me will be brought up on charges. Winterfrost growled. Nightshade worked with Grimm to try and take down the Enclave as a whole. He killed the last High Council ponies to put himself in that position. Hey, I thought the courier and that stranger killed him. Thundercracker said. Yeah, that's right. I remember it because we got a full report on it. Winterfrost ignored him, saying, The stranger that was spoken of, the pony who hides his identity and has killed Enclave ponies for many years now is none other than Nightshade. That quieted them all down. Luckily for me, Fairy Glitter knew that was the biggest part of his change charges. Everything that had been brought up by my father had to do with the deaths of the High Council ponies and his role as the stranger. I smiled as I watched our plan fall into place. Before Winter Frost could keep speaking, a blur of brown and white landed on the stage with a loud boom. The stranger stood there with his bandages wrapped around his face and his signature hat standing on his, uh, shading his bright green eyes. He also bore the black combat armor around his body in the trench coat. Well, not he. It was Solstice using the outfit my father had her wear when she was pretending to be him when I came out of the memory orb back in Saint's Parish. Thanks to the voice modulator, she was using the same voice as my father. Are you talking about me, Winterfrost? Or did the attack back at FNF Tools rattle your brain? The stranger asked. Winterfrost looked stunned to see the stallion who he thought he had captured standing right in front of him. He looked at his guards, then back at the stranger. This is a trick! Ah, really? As you can see, I'm standing right here, and the pony you're trying to charge with my crimes isn't. Seems rather too indisposed. If you want to punish someone for taking down the High Council, then I'm your culprit. I worked with the carrier to kill the former High Council. The stranger said, Capture him! Winterfrost yelled. 
I want him taken alive. I wouldn't do that if I were you, the stranger said, chuckling. If any of your soldiers move, let's just say my sniper will give you a third eye. A red dot appeared on the ground then, moved up to Winterfrost's head. He froze and growled. Even if Nightshade isn't you, he's still a traitor. He was working with you. He wanted power for himself. Let Nightshade go! A stallion screamed from the crowd. Never! Winterfrost growled. Then he smiled a little, saying... I rule the western cities now. Even if you want to say Nightshade had nothing to do with their deaths, I don't believe you. You don't have to believe me. The citizens of the Enclave do, the stranger said as she turned to look at the crowd. I killed the last High Council because they were plotting against the ponies I work with. I admit that I have killed numerous Enclave ponies before, but I did so to protect you all from the dark dealings going on. She pointed at Nightshade. I'm sure Nightshade become your new Ki council pony, because I knew he could lead Stratus, Nimbus, and the ground cities to a much better future. Solstice could really get dramatic when she wanted. Winterfrost started to laugh, making Solstice stop her fake speech and look over at him as he said, I think it's about time we end this little charade. Nightshade will die today, so will Greed and the Courier, who I know is in the city right now. Shadow, look. Sardis tried to say, but he was cut off. I tried to look up at what happened, but right as I turned, a hoof slammed into the back of my head, sending me flying into the wall next to me. I wasn't expecting to find you in power armor, Courier. The voice of Captain Strife said with her icy tone, I'll admit, it took me longer to figure out where you were. I'm glad to see you could make it to the party. I twisted around and blasted a spell at her, but she dodged it and fired a blast of magical energy from her battle saddle. It hit my dad's armor and sent a jolt through me, but didn't do much damage. At the same time she attacked, Winterfrost attacked Solstice, who managed to duck his blow and take to the air. I saw what was going on now. We'd been caught or set up. I dodged another attack from Strife and ran out of the alley, right as the crowd erupted into an angry riot. Strife tried to chase after me, but I used a barrier spell to block her attack as I yelled at the crowd. If you want to see Nightshade back in power, now's the time to fight! If any of you try to free him, you'll all be killed, Winterfrost yelled. Then a book hit him in the face. I almost laughed at the shocked look on his face as blood ran out of his nose from the random object being thrown by a random citizen. Then he growled and shouted, Soldiers of Navarro, kill any pony who resisted! As he spoke, at least a hundred power-armored pegasi flew into sight and opened fire on the enraged crowd. My eyes went wide as I watched ponies die. Screams erupted from the crowd as blood flew. Parents died protecting their foals. The body parts fell through the clouds. I started to pull on my magic when Strife came in and kicked me in the horn, sending utter agony through my head as my spell backfired. I screamed but managed to keep myself from passing out from the pain as I rounded on her took aim with EFS, and bit down on the trigger of a battle saddle to open fire on her. Bright green balls of plasma exploded out of the two mounted guns on the armor, and then flew towards the power-armored mare. She managed to dodge two of them, but a third clipped her wing. She managed to keep to the skies, but the ability to maintain altitude looked slightly labored. Then I heard Thundercracker yell, Look out! I ducked as a bullet went past my head. It was so close that a few strands of my mane fell to the clouds. I switched to see four pegasi in power armor taking aim from behind them when a frost was holding my father's revolver to his head. I felt my heart stop as he smiled around the bit and got ready to fire. Right then, the four pegasi opened fire on me, but I'd already pulled up a barrier and started running towards them with a new spell I'd learned ready to go. I knew I couldn't get to my dad in time, but 
but some pony else could. I fired the spell not at Winter Frost, who was looking like he was getting ready to gloat, but at Thunderling, uh, Cracker's collar. The spell wasn't much. It wouldn't hurt any pony, but it was like a focused spark grenade. It did what I hoped and shorted out the collar that was blocking the gem embedded in Greed's chest from doing its job. He started to cackle like a mad pony as his body turned into that dense gray material. He launched himself at Winter Frost, who just managed to push my father out of the way as the trigger was pulled. I opened fire on the pegasi trying to kill me. Two flew off to take cover, and the other two died as their bodies turned into green goo. I watched the bullet fired from Demon Slayer hit Greed's flank, and to my surprise, it sank into him, followed by a spray of blood. Well, damn. There must be some powerful enchantment on that revolver, Thundercracker said as a mad grin pulled on his hardened face. Can't wait till it's mine. Winter Frost took a step back and aimed to fire again at Thundercracker, but the cunning Pegasus avoided the attack and dove at him. As they fought, I entered Sats. I took aim at both Pegasi who had taken cover, right as their heads came up to my, check my position. A blast of green energy took them out. I took the chance to run for my father, who'd fallen to the ground just off the stage. Another guard landed next to him, taking aim with his battle saddle. Before he could fire, a bullet tore half his head off, followed by a massive boom from above. I skidded to a halt, looking up to see Stardust taking aim with a massive rifle. My earpiece beeped, followed by Stardust, saying, Jeez, this thing really kicks! But damn, does it do some damage! You okay, Dusty? Now I'm really glad you decided to bring Wrath's AMR, I said. Ha! <laughs> With all the work I had to do to fix it, no, it's mine now. Also, yes, I'm fine. It took me a minute or three to take care of the assholes who attacked me. I've got this for now. Go help your father and get Thundercracker away from Winterfrost so I can put an end to this. Stardust said as he took aim once more at some Enclave soldiers who were flying in to help Winterfrost and took them out with two shots. Sure thing, Dusty, I said and finally made my way up to father. I knelt next to him, saying, Dad, you okay? His face was swollen, and he looked weak. I'm fine, sweetheart. But what the hell are you doing up here? Who taught you to use power armor? Long story. This is your armor. I'd figured you'd want to help us take back Stratus. I replied. It would definitely help a lot, and so would a healing potion if you have one. He said, as he spoke, Solstice, dressed in the stranger, landed next to us. Got him right here for you, Nightshade. She held out three vials in her muzzle. Dad looked them over, then took one before saying, Who the hell are you, and how did you get that outfit? It's Solstice. Now drink the rest and get into your power armor. I still have a bigger part to play in this plan, I said as I used my Mark II to open the armor. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He said, rolling his eyes as he drank another potion. So bossy, isn't she? Solstice chuckled to herself, saying, Yeah, but you learned to live with it. I rolled my eyes, then stepped out of the armor. I quickly hugged my father and kissed his cheek before saying, Stay alive, stay safe, and follow Solstice's lead. What are you going to do? He asked. What I have to. I replied before nodding at Solstice and running up towards the stage. There was a camera set up to broadcast the execution to the entire Western Enclave. I turned it on as Thundercracker and Winter Frost thought from the other side of the stage. A moment passed, then my image showed up on the large screen I could make out in the distance. By the way of the fuck it adjustment, I put on my best smile and started phase two of my plan. Citizens of the Grand Pegasus Enclave, for those of you who didn't get the privilege of seeing my first broadcast, hi, I'm Shadowstar, but you know me by another name. I'm the courier of New Pegasus. Yes, I'm here in Stratus, where I've just saved the lives of your High Counselor Nightshade, who is my father, and Greed, who's a former sin. You've all been living your lives under a lie brought on by ponies like Winter Frost and his sister, Captain Strife. 
You've been told that my father has betrayed you, that he's been plotting to have your cities taken over by wastelanders. Sure, it might be true that my father wants to reunite the wasteland and the enclave, but not to have your cities taken over. He wants to help fix the wrongs my distant grandfather committed when he had the cloud cover put up and broke away the pegasi and some unicorns from the west of Equestria. After forty years of ruling, you all, Night Stalker wanted to fix what he had broke. But some ponies, like Winter Frost's family, didn't want to lose the control they had over ponies like you. So they cast him out, branded him a Dashite, and took over for themselves. It's taken over a hundred and sixty years to finally come to this point. It's time to stop hiding up here in the clouds and ignoring what's going on down below. The leaders of your cities know that there is great evil brewing on the surface. And it'll come up to your cities too if you don't rise up. It's time to bring our two lands together. It's time to fight for what's right. It's time to bring Equestria back from the dust and help this land become whole again. So, citizens and soldiers alike, take back your cities. Break free of your chains of servitude to the Enclave and become something better. Fight for Stratus. Fight for Nimbus. Fight for the Twin Cities. Fight for the Crystal Empire. And help me fight to protect New Pegasus. If you don't, then soon Captain Strife and the remaining Seven Sins of Equinity will use their forces to attack a city that is taken in your brothers, your sisters, your colts, your fillies, who have been branded over the years, and protected them. They all want to kill those who don't follow them. So let's give them a fight to remember. With all that said, I blasted the camera to oblivion and turned towards Winter Frost, who was still fighting with Thundercracker, who said, You know, you sound pretty sexy when you're all serious like that. I'm flattered, Thundercracker, but I think it's time Winter Frost gets what's coming to him, I responded. I don't know, Shadow. i kind of liking the fight with this one. He's full of piss and vinegar, Thundercracker said. Thundercracker, we don't have time to play with him. If you're up to it, I need you to head to New Moon and take it back before Strife gets her hooves on it. If we get a Thunderhead on our side, we'll have the firepower to hold Stratus. Think you can do that? I asked. His grin was from ear to ear. Do I get to keep it if I take it? No, but I'll let you pick three things inside of it to take for yourself. How's that sound? I asked. My father landed next to me, looking a lot better and in his power armor. Solstice was with him and out of the stranger's outfit. Thundercracker, if you help me take the new moon, I'll make you its commander. And if I have to... I'll even reinstate you as a citizen of the Enclave. Either way, I'll need your help. Winter Frost took a step back, growling in anger as he looked at the four of us. You'll never take the new moon back, or this city. I have Navarro on my side. You three get out of here. I'll take care of him, I said, pulling out my mother's plasma rifle. Shadow, you'll need our help. Solstice said. I have Stardust, I said. Then popped my neck and took aim with the plasma rifle as Thundercracker flew to my father and Solstice. Winterfrost, it's time for your family to die. This is my father's city, not yours or your twisted leaders. You'll serve as a message to him about to not fuck with my family. I fired a fully charged blast of green plasma at the bastard who tried to kill my father. At the same time, my father, Solstice, and Thundercracker flew away. I also heard Stardust fire his AMR at Winterfrost at the same time I fired my plasma rifle. Finally, we were going to end him. Crack. Boom. There was a flash of pink, nearly blinding light, right as my plasma rifle and Stardust's bullet hit something that appeared in front of Winterfrost. I had to squint for a moment, because the light was so intense. When I could see again, I felt my legs grow weak. Standing in front of Winter Frost with a translucent pink barrier was Aquila. 
Winterfrost glared at her. It's about damn time you showed up. That deranged psychopath was about to kill me. Aquila, what are you doing here? I raged as it filled my soul. Aquila barely glanced at me before saying, I'll be with you in a moment, Shadow. I'm only here to give a message to this moron. Are you working with Winter Frost? I yelled. Stardust fired another round, but the round just broke apart on the barrier she directed. Winter Frost looked into Aquila's pink eyes. <laughs> what message do you have for me? You work for me and you, my family, monster. Kill the courier and her friends. I don't work for you or your grandfather. I work with him and only to reach my goal of unlocking my full power, she said smugly. I didn't come here to save you. I only wanted to make sure you heard your grandfather's message before you died. I blasted a spell at Aquila, but it didn't do more damage than Stardust's rifle had. Aquila pulled out a broadcaster and the voice of a ghoul, who I knew was Thunderlane, echoed out of the device. Winner Frost, this is the third time now that you've failed me. I've been watching everything from Cirrus, and I can no longer have a failure like you in this family. I stopped my attack and watched, along with a few other pegasi, who started showing up since Aquila appeared. Stardust landed next to me as Winterfrost's normally smug expression changed to fear. Grandfather, we haven't failed. The courier's right in front of me. With Aquila's help, I can kill her. No, Winter, you can't. Right now, I need her alive. If she dies by your hooves, I could, could kill our ally. And we need her to get Falling Shadows working. It's time you make... Uh, time for you to suffer the same punishment that your father did. So your sister can take over from here on down. Aquila, make sure every pony knows why you don't mess with the true leaders of the Enclave. Thunderlane said before cutting off the communicator. The grin that pulled at Aquila's lips twisted her features to match the monster she really was as she started to chuckle within her magical protection. Oh, I'll do that and more, she said as she connected to some pony else on her communicator. Captain Strife, this is an order from the Enclave leader. Wipe out any ponies who even dare to defy us. If Stratus must fall to prove our point, so be it. The ice bitch's voice echoed back with only two words, I sent a shiver down my spine. Roger that. Aquila looked back at Stardust and I, then said, Enclave soldiers, you are not to hurt the courier, but her friend, the runaway, is fair game. Any pony who takes him out will get a handsome reward from the Supreme Leader. Same goes for any of you citizens who thought it would be better to take sides with her. I don't care if you have to burn this entire cloud city. Dozens of ponies around us said at once, Yes, ma'am! I flipped around right as the screaming started. The power-armored pegasi around us, who only a few moments ago had been trying to kill Stardust and I, turned their battle saddles on the citizens, who had only been watching what was going on. In a few moments ago, a few seconds, I watched them open fire as every pony who was still on the clearing. Stallions were turned to dust as they tried to protect their families. Mares died, pushing their foals towards safety. And even the foals were gunned down as they ran screaming from the orders given by Aquila and Thunderlane. In less than a minute, the clouds around me were covered in blood and bodies, and yet more were still dying. Trying to escape, the soldiers who were supposed to protect the Pegasi of Stratus. Through it all, Aquila laughed and said, You see, Shadow, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much faith you put into the ponies around you, they'll always die. I slowly turned my head back to look at the monster who was so much like my old self. How could you do this? And that mad smile of hers never faltered as more and more died around us. I heard Stardust opening fire on the soldiers next to me as he tried to say something to me, but I'd gone numb to it all. 
The only thing I could concentrate on was her, as she used her magic to take hold of Winter Frost, who tried to yell something, but Aquila made sure not a sound could escape his lips. I can do this because I am power. That is something that you need to come to terms with, because once I get this spell your mother placed over me removed, I'm going to make sure you suffer and then die. Just like this, Aquila said, and she turned her head towards Winter Frost and said sweetly, Let's make you match your namesake. Her horn flashed, and a moment later she let Winter Frost scream in agony, right before his body turned into ice. It started at his hooves and worked its way up his body, slowly freezing him until only his eyes were left unfrozen. The look of pain and anger in them found me, and I knew right then, before his sight was gone forever, that he was blaming me once again for his failure. Then his eyes became cloudy right before they too became nothing but frozen orbs like the rest of his body. Then, with a sigh of boredom, Aquila dropped the frozen winter frost and he vanished through the clouds. She looked back at me and winked. I need to be going now, but do enjoy the show. Don't worry, no pony who works for us will try to hurt you. Wouldn't want to suffer the same fate as you just yet. Until next time, my annoying little vessel. With that, she vanished in a flash of pink light. I was left in shock as my father's city started to die around me. That was until a hoof smacked me in the face, followed by Stardust yelling, Shadow, snap out of it! I blinked. She... she killed him. Yeah, I saw. Who cares? He was supposed to die anyway. We can't worry about her. We need to save the city. Now get a hold of yourself. Forget about that bitch for once and help me. He yelled before pulling his large sniper rifle up again and firing at an enclave soldier who was trying to attack two fillies running for a house. I shook my head and pulled out Dreamwalker and Mom's plasma rifle. You're right. Let's see what we can do. Good. We need to take out any Pegasi in power armor who are attacking citizens. Try to aim for their visors. That's the best way to take them down. Pegasus power armor isn't as tough as steel ranger armor, Stardust said. I think I can do that, I said, as I entered Sats and targeted two headshots at an enclave soldier in open fire. One hit, the second blew through one of the guns on her battle saddle. The plasma rifle on the side exploded at the same time as her head whipped back and her body fell through the clouds. I flipped around and fired to another Pegasus who opened fire at me hitting my armored barding with magical laser blasts until one of my plasma bursts slammed into her wing, and she fell to the ground, screaming. I was just about to take her out when Cascade landed next to her, pointing a beautiful-looking pistol that looked like Dreamwalker at her head and put her out of her misery. What are you dimwit standing around for? There's a bunch of dumbass kids at a zoo? We've got bigger problems than a few Navarro rats. Cascade said before twisting around to dodge an attack from a stallion. He rolled, popping back up and blasting the Pegasus right in the visor. What could be worse than soldiers killing any Stratus citizens they can? Stardust asked, blasting two shots at a pair of Pegasi who tried to take out an elderly couple, trying to get to a door down the street. The new moon's taken flight and is heading for the inner city. That thing has powerful enough guns that it could take out the entire building there in a matter of minutes. Cascade yelled before dodging another attack. This time from a Pegasus who wasn't in power armor, but was wearing a military outfit that didn't match up with what I'd seen in Stratus before. Cascade shocked Stardust and I, doing a backflip. He came down to the other soldiers, slamming him to the ground and snapping his neck before he looked back at us. Dumbass. I thought my father and Thundercracker were going to take New Moon back from Captain Strife, I asked. Last I heard there were, but you sent a small force to go after a flying death machine. They're gonna need help. Also, where's Solstice? She isn't answering her comm. She went with Thundercracker and my dad, I replied. She what? Cascade yelled. 
Why the hell did you let my daughter go towards that monster of a ship? Like we could stop her, Stardust said. Plus, she can take care of herself, Dad, and you know it. I don't give a damn, smart mouth. He raged before taking a deep breath. <sighs> Can't fix it now, but I swear if she dies, I'm going to stick my hoof so far up both your asses that you'll be smelling ozone from the bottom of my hoof for weeks. I was about to say something about how she would be just fine with greed by her side. But just then a shadow blocked out the sun overhead. The new moon flew over us, heading towards a large building in the middle of the city. The three of us looked up right as a green blast went off, exploded out of one of the massive cannons in front of us as it vanished from view. A moment later, screams and the sound of breaking glass and the rumble of something falling echoed around us. It only took a moment for the large thunderhead to pass us and started opening fire on Stratus. I was in shock at the massive power of that ship, and I took a step back. We need to bring that thing down. I really wish I had solar flare right now. If you did, you still wouldn't use it, Stardust said as he strapped his rifle to his back. Thundercracker, my sister and your dad are in there. If you used it... They would die, too. I know, but I don't know what else can take that thing down, I said. We can do it, Cascade said as he looked away from the ship. Don't worry about the citizens here. I already called in every favor I have of the Stratus Guard. They'll take down the rest of the hopeless wise asses who think they can destroy this city. I took a deep breath and then said, Okay. Let's get up on that thing then and stop strife once and for all. It's time to end this. Shadow, you fly with me, Stardust said, crouching down so I could climb onto his back. Dad, cover us and see if you can get away uh, any available guards or soldiers to come help us. We'll need numbers if we can take down that ship. Already done, son. Let's go. He said as he took to the air. I got onto Stardust right before he took off, following his father. As we flew towards the monster ship, I took another look at the large pistol now holstered on Cascade's barding. Is that a Luna Edition Desert Eagle? He smiled. Sure is. It was awarded to me not long after I retired. Its name is Reaper. I see you have Dreamwalker. Thought that one was lost. Nah, it was just in a display case at a dance studio for 200 years. I said as I holstered Dreamwalker and the plasma rifle. Cascade nodded to me as we flew closer to the new moon. As we did, more Pegasi joined us. All in power armor. At first, I thought they were going to attack again. But then I saw one nod to Cascade. I couldn't help the small smile pull up my lips. A feeling that grew into a full-on grin. As I looked up at the citizens of Stratus below... Some were still running from the attacking Navarro soldiers, but most were using their own weapons or magic in a chance, a case of a few unicorns I saw, to fight back or protect. Then, from the city itself, sirens started to go off, a blurring loud, high-pitched noise that was piercing my ears. That was soon followed by another blast from the new moon. But the siren kept going on and on and on. As the sounds grew louder... That place deep in my soul, where the memories of Night Stalker seemed to reside, pulsed, and my vision started to go dark. No! I yelled before I felt my body lose hold of Stardust. He yelled something, but I never heard it as my mind slipped into the past, the last thing I felt my body falling through the Staratus sky. <laughs>